Subjects like these can sometimes seem baffling when they don't need to be. What they tell everyone that they are seeing in the sky during the day and what you're seeing during the night is a million miles from the truth. And I don't mean 93 million miles away either. By the end of this video, you will be questioning your beliefs to what you are actually seeing every day and every night. And this will be backed up with video footage and proven experiments. Take your sunscreen off. It ain't going to help you, because what you're going to learn now will definitely burn your brain. Welcome to Dot 14, the sun, the moon, and the dome. It's only fitting to start with the giver of life, the giver of heat, the sun. No, not that tabloid newspaper, the real sun. The sun is that significant that some religions and cultures worship it like a god. That's quite fitting, because without it, would we exist? I doubt it very much. Well, in fact, we wouldn't. It is that important to life that trees, plants and even weeds grow towards it, like they are spreading their hands out to greet it. We, as human beings, tend to take it for granted, don't you think? It's not the actual existence or importance of the sun itself that I'm going to question, but it's the makeup its location and its trajectory. Scientists, and you know how much I love scientists, <laughs> scientists call it a large star. They talk about it as if it's a ball of gases sitting at the center of our universe, produced by nuclear fusion at its core. And it was formed 4.6 million years ago. Here we go again. They talk about it as if it's sat right next to them. They don't know that. They just guess that yet again. They tell you their guess and you have to believe it like it's the God's truth and no other conclusion is important. They're in the know. Don't question it, peasant. They say it is around 109 times larger than the Earth and 93 million miles away from us. No, oh, I don't say planet. Really? How do you know, Mr. Scientist? Measured it, have you? Driven there one quiet weekend, have you? Well, I'm suggesting to you now that it is nowhere near 93 million miles away. Have a look at this. be the judge. How can a burning object shine its rays through the sky from 93 million miles away only to follow the rays projection back to the focal point and it would be much 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 closer than 93 million miles? It doesn't make sense unless of course you don't question it. Tell me this also, if the sun projects its heat from 93 million miles away to the equator say then how come just another few hundred miles, its heat diminishes? Blimey, all that way, and it cools in just a hundred miles? There have been numerous shots of the sun with clouds behind it. How can that be? Here's a couple more.
They also say that one day when the hydrogen fusion diminishes, the sun will expand. It will expand so much that it will transform into a red giant, killing everybody on Earth. Stop it, science guys, you're scaring me. I feel so insignificant again. Give me a friggin' break. We don't exactly know what the sun is or how far away it is, but we do know some things. We do know that it is only a couple of thousand miles away at the most, and we do know its trajectory. As you can see, the sun and the moon revolve around a flat plane, moving closer to the centre and then slowly moving back out towards the edge, creating not only night and day, but creating the seasons also. It moves from the equator out to the Tropic of Cancer and back in again, and then into the Tropic of Capricorn, thus creating seasons and tropical and polar regions. Is the sun really 93 million miles away? I don't know. I don't think so. Our friends at NASA are able to take high definition images of the sun in all its glory, coughing out solar flares, spurting out plasma plumes. Amazing, huh? Yet they can't get a high definition picture of the bottom of the earth. Crazy. This is further enhanced when you look at the word tropic as in Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. In Latin, it means pertaining to turn. So the sun turns at each tropic. The sun has a massive importance to our health, not only to sustain life, but to enhance our well-being. No wonder some folk worship it. Ultraviolet exposure from the sun is the primary method humans need to boost their vitamin D levels. This has an immense health benefit to all. Now please look this up yourself because I'm no doctor and I'm not here to give you health advice. But when your skin is exposed to sunlight, it makes vitamin D from cholesterol in your body. Okay, name two things that authorities, led by the one presenters, tell you to avoid. Sunshine and too much cholesterol. So they want you to avoid sunshine by whacking on factor 200 sunblocker when venturing outdoors. Oh, good idea. Block those all important ultraviolet vitamin D producing rays. Then what are they always telling us? Your cholesterol is too high. Oh, another good idea. Lower that cholesterol. The same cholesterol in the skin cells that provide the energy for vitamin D synthesis to occur. Like I said, I'm no doctor. I haven't spent numerous years in medical in doctor sorry sorry medical school anyhow I've digressed sorry I truly believe that our sun is a burning somewhat localized disk revolving around our flat plane here's a little thought provoking fact for you ever noticed that when there's a space launch the countdown always says take off in t minus 20 seconds and counting now we supposedly live on a planet, right? If our world was flat, then we would live on a plane, right? Now if you took away the T in planet, as in T minus, would that not read plane? Ooh, in plain sight, you be the judge. Let's now talk about the moon. Now this is a fascinating subject. There are so many unanswered questions about this disc or sphere or ball in our skies. Some say it's a spherical planet made up of rock, etc. Some say it's a ball of plasma held together by gravity. Some even say it's an alien satellite with a hollow interior where immense powers plot against our existence. I'm swaying towards a plasma ball, but not with gravity having any part of its makeup. This is complex and I'm going to try and explain it in layman's or laywoman's or lay non-binary terms. Bear with me though, it's not easy. Have an open mind. A man named Sturgios concluded that what is on the moon's surface is pure and simply a reflection of the Earth's land masses and more. And he has a valid point when you look into it. In effect, it's a mirror image. 
He has mapped it in the smallest of details, time zones, seasons, distances, and even flight paths. But as you can see, further to the land masses or continents that we know, there are unknown lands. He called this unknown land Terra Vista, land view. And the solar eclipses that we have, they tell us that these are when the sun and the moon align with the earth, with the moon being in the middle, obstructing the sun. And tell me why is it during some eclipses the moon is visible to the side of the eclipse when this happens? Is there a second sun or a second moon? And then the coincidences come rolling back. Because for an eclipse to happen, they tell you that the sun is 400 times the size of the moon. And it happens to be 400 times further away also. Not that the moon and sun are the same size. Oh, despite our own eyes seeing this, we shouldn't believe these eyes of ours, but believe what the scientists tell us. Is the moon the opposite to our sun? A yin and yang, if you will. Notice in the yin and yang symbol, the two disks. They say that the moonlight is just reflected light from the sun. Strange. Isn't the sun the other side of the planet part of the year? So they say. If you shine a light on a ball, no matter how far away or how big, the light concentrates on the projected centre point of the object. This whole object does, doesn't light up. That's the laws of reflection. The moon gives out its own light. It is an illuminary. An illuminati. <laughs> And if the moon is some kind of plasma, the craters that they show when they want it to look like a ball, a planet, are they not? How do I explain this? You know, when you heat paint that has not yet dried properly, it forms a kind of crater effect, like burst bubbles. Could it not be that? Who knows? Plus, when the sun shines and a shadow forms, the shade, it is cooler. We all know that. How many times have we dived into a shadow to cool down after a good sunbathe? But did you know that the moonlight shadow... Ooh, I feel a song coming on, Mr. Oldfield. Pass me my tubular bells. In the moonlight shadows, it's the exact opposite. It is warmer. Exact opposites. Yin and yang. More evidence that it is a form of plasma disc is the fact that at times you can see through the moon. Sometimes you can look through the moon and see stars. That doesn't show the moon as a solid object like a ball or a planet. What say you? So I seriously believe that the sun and the moon rotate in a spiral around a flat earth, both sustaining life. Because for life to exist, everything must have an opposite. What if, in the centre of a flat earth, the North Pole, there's a magnetic field with a core. Similar to the heliocentric globe earthers say the Earth's core is at its centre. They call it Hyperborea in the olden days. Now this North Pole, the centre, emits magnetic radiation, similar if not the same as X-rays. It is proven to have the biggest pool of mercury at the North Pole. Mercury along with magnetism is used to create energy, vril energy. Lawrence Bragg, he of Bragg's Law of X-ray Diffraction, won the Nobel Prize for Physics, the youngest ever recipient, for discovering the ways crystal structures act with light refraction. In other words, what happens to light when it hits a crystal or crystal-like structure? He determined that, in basic terms, that when light hits crystal, it can cause X-ray type images to appear outside its surfaces. So is the moon a projection from a magnetic or other similar source coming from the centre of the Earth? Probably the most famous image of how this happens is a certain famous album cover. Probably one of the most famous album covers. And no, it's not my Coalfield. Recognise it? And what is the title of this album cover? 
Well done. Most of you. Dark side of the moon. Coincidence? Hidden in plain sight? We seem to be stuck in a labyrinth of deception. I've said it once and I'll say it again. You be the judge. Now for this to happen it obviously needs a crystallized surface to work. That's when we enter the realms of a dome. A firmament. Now I'm not going to harp on or start quoting scripture. But the firmament or dome is mentioned several times in the Bible. It is mentioned in numerous old world cultures, from the Aztecs to the Mayans, from the Greeks to the Romans. The evil that try to run our world now know it exists. They have even tried to destroy it. It is said that it divides the waters from below from the waters above. It's hard to imagine, I know, but the firmament is thought to be made up of some kind of crystallized waters or something and it holds the waters above. It's a little bit more complex than that, but I hope I've explained it so that you get some sort of picture. So is this the crystallized structure that Bragg was on about to diffract an X-ray onto? Is this how the moon is formed, with its X-ray type image of the earth lands projected onto it? Personally, I don't know, but it sounds possible to me. Also, have a look at rainbows. They tell you that it's like refracting off a raindrop or water. Plausible. But how come it doesn't refract it in a straight line? Oh yeah, they say it's because the raindrop is circular. Plausible. But are they sure it's not because of the dome, the firmament? Because let's face it, a rainbow can be huge. It can fill the width of your vision at times. You've heard the saying, there's a pot of gold at the end of every rainbow right? Does that pot of gold represent the truth? Legend has it that a leprechaun sits at the end of a rainbow. Maybe we need to ask one. That's the end of Dot 14. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed it and it wasn't too intense. I tried to make it as easy to understand as possible, but sometimes the truth isn't easy to comprehend. I'd really appreciate it if you can subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you have the time, just check that you are still subscribed, as several friends have told me that YouTube has unsubscribed them for some reason. Oh, what fun I'm having with them. Don't forget to smash the like button and leave a comment if you think I'm right, or even if you think I'm wrong. I love hearing from you. Take care, look after each other, and I'll see you in dot 15. Bye for now.